Cause it's Arkham Knight and we'll have a fright. And it's Arkham Knight. We're gonna all oh, gonna die. Quinn's where are you? Uh Did you not get my text? No. About playing the Marvel Champions card game? No. Instead of the Arkham Horror card no. game? No! Quince, Tom made eldritch sausage rolls. Sausage rolls are pretty eldritch anyway. Hello? <sighs> Great. Okay, so in 2017, Matt and I got pretty obsessed with the Arkham Horror card game. A cooperative game where everyone's character was a custom deck that would get stronger and stranger as you made your way through campaigns. Here at Shut Up and Sit Down, we would call the Arkham Horror card game the best cooperative adventure since Gloomhaven. Our only criticism was that it was quite expensive because each chapter in the story had to be bought separately. Although, since our review, the new upgrade packs that Fantasy Flight has been selling have made revisiting each campaign in a sort of new game plus a really appealing prospect. But in the 21st century, three things are inevitable. Death, taxes, and the Marvel franchise. So Fantasy Flight has now released Marvel Champions, the card game. Another card game that sees cooperatively players taking a deck that is their character, taking on another deck that is the scenario. It's also still not for one to four players, no matter what the box says. With four players, this game is still as slow as a baby, covered in peanut butter, trying to cross a ball pit. And so I find myself exclusively thinking of it, once again, as a two player game. The biggest difference is that this game is now friendlier. All that campaign stuff is gone, replaced with one and done fights that you can squeak into a lunch break. The other difference, of course, is that instead of investigators, you are now Marvels? Superheroes, that's it. But which superheroes can you be in the core box? I'm so glad you asked. You can be family emergency, business problems, legal work, affairs of state, and eviction notice. I'm kidding. These are the obligation cards of Iron Man, Spider-Man, She-Hulk, Captain Marvel, and Black Panther, who are all playable out of the box. Kudos here to Fantasy Flight for continuing the company's excellent stance on diversity. Of the first seven heroes released for Marvel Champions, almost half of them are women. And you know what that means. This game is the proud recipient of the Shut Up and Sit Down Feminism Seal for being good enough. My wife actually made this, and I know what you're thinking. Did we pay her for her labor? No. So, you've got your hero and you want to play Marvel Champions. <sighs> Don't worry, I'm going to teach you how. The first thing you are going to do is assemble a scenario from whatever component parts you have in your collection. It's almost an unintentional homage to cut and paste Hollywood movies. Should we do uh, Spider-Man and Iron Man versus Ultron, but there's also a bomb scare? Yeah? Done! Let's get lunch. First, you take a villain deck, which in itself comes in a range of difficulties, and then you can add optional modules to tweak the difficulty further. Rhino working with these weird evildoers from the 60s might be manageable. Rhino plus an invading alien army is horrible. I mean, it's also just a horrible story. Don't you think we should pick a, yeah, pick one bad guy? Yeah, pick a lane, right? You then bulk up the villain deck with these standard cards, plus some optional extra cards if you want to make your life absolutely wretched. And you might, because with no campaign for players to contentedly chundle through, the appeal in Marvel Champions, besides seeing all the new cards you buy, is in overcoming harder and harder villain decks. So, you've got your villain deck. To finish that up, you're going to grab the villain health dial and spin that up to its maximum. If the heroes can pummel this back down to zero, the heroes win. You're also going to pop out the villain's master plan. Throughout the game, the villain is going to be scheming away like a mean scheme machine. And if they ever get enough threat tokens on this to finish it, the heroes instantly lose. So you've set up the bad guys. All that's left is for each player to chuck in their good guy. If you're using one of the game's pre-constructed decks, this is incredibly easy. All you do is chuck your hero's obligation card into the villain deck. And this is a lovely bit of color. You pop your hero's personal nemesis deck to one side. Every hero comes with a nemesis that might unexpectedly gatecrash any scenario you play. 
So, when you're picking which hero you want to play, it's like you're entering a relationship and then immediately hearing rumours about their evil ex. Oh, I love you, Tony, but can we talk about Whiplash? They're a real dingus. If you do want to customise your hero deck, and honestly, at higher difficulties, you're gonna absolutely have to, this has actually been made nice and easy as well. You need 40 cards in total, but every hero deck first starts off with that hero's 15 cards, and then you pick an aspect for that deck. Either aggression, protection, justice, or leadership. Or as I remember them, damaging, ducking, disrupting, and delegating. And then you just fill in anything else you think your deck is missing with mediocre neutral cards. A bit like you're pasting in grout. Now, if all of this seems maybe a little intimidating because you would define yourself more as a Marvel nerd than a card game nerd, I'm happy to say that Marvel Champions is aimed at you. It's got these pre-constructed decks and a pretty good tutorial that on-ramp you onto the experience very quickly. And soon you'll find yourself saying things like, I exhaust my helicarrier and play the power of protection to play Luke Cage, if that's something you want. But also, if you've not played a Fantasy Flight living card game before, oh, you're in for a treat. At any point playing Marvel Champions, you can look down at all the cards in play and see a story as if you were reading radioactive tea leaves. Picture the scene. You're Tony Stark. Your personal med team can only treat one person and you have to decide whether they should operate on Hawkeye or She-Hulk when both are badly injured. But both need to go out and fight Ultron. She-Hulk's player tells you to treat Hawkeye and limps out to tangle with the villain with just one hit point left. Is this the end for our hero? But her player drops Gamma Slam, a ferocious card that turns all of She-Hulk's hurt into rage and does 14 damage to the villain knocking out Ultron and saving the planet. Ah, oh, I mean this as high praise. Often the cards played in a game of Marvel Champions read like the panels of a middling comic book. Of course, that is entertaining, but like most card games, it's even more entertaining when the story it's telling doesn't quite work. Picture the scene, you're Black Panther, or at least you hope to be in about 15 minutes. You need to pay for Black Panther's equipment cards first, but oh, this is embarrassing. You just can't seem to find them. In desperation, you pay through the nose for the Avengers Mansion, tap it to draw a card and find your claws. Were they between some sofa cushions? Also, you can't afford the claws because you invested all of your resources as head of state of Wakanda into a timeshare. It's also continually funny to me how in Marvel Champions your allies can take hits for you, which means a vital part of the game is having a load of friends with life-threatening injuries on speed dial so that when Rhino is about to smash through a wall and deal eight points of damage to you, instead you can quickly text Black Widow to jump in front and take all the damage for you. So instead of taking eight damage yourself, she just lost her one hit point that she had left. I mean, she's gone now, she's in your discard pile, but oh, that mathed out great, didn't it? Speaking of maths, let's talk a little bit about this game that you're playing because it's tight, and mean, and interesting. So you're always on your turn gonna draw a hand of cards from your deck, and some of these are going to be events, which are one-off cards that provide a little razzle-dazzle, but lots of other cards will be upgrades, or support, or allies, or Samuel Jackson. And by paying for these cards, you get to put them down semi-permanently, and these cards become tools in your arsenal that then help you attack, or defend, or thwart, which is the process of removing threat from a villain's scheme. Now this could be as dramatic as disarming a bomb, or as mundane as, believe it or not, disrupting a meeting. <laughs> Before you can play any card, you first have to pay its cost in the top left hand corner. And you pay this cost with other cards from your hand. So this actually turns every single turn in Marvel Champions into a bit of a brain teaser. You can always play any card or cards you want, but you have to figure out which options and opportunities you're gonna throw away to make it oh, happen. Now, if your only experience of card games is something like Magic the Gathering, where you may or may not be able to play one card on your turn before receiving 
One more card. You'll discover that Marvel Champions has the bounciness of professional parkour. Every turn you're using this card to play that card and these two cards to play that card and then tap this card to draw this card and then use this card to play that card and players every turn will vanish their hand like an expensive juicer before being given a brand new one. And this ridiculousness grows every turn as you play more and more cards to this tableau in front of you. And this is part of the appeal of Marvel Champions, this sensation of growing an engine of progress until very quickly you will, in each game, feel like a superhero, able to unleash a tornado of paper cuts on an enemy. Biff, pow, thwack, boom, biff, eight damage. How many hit points did he have, anyway? He had two. Didn't mean to do that much damage. Can superheroes get done for manslaughter? Another decision on your turn? You gotta figure out whether you're gonna strip off your spandex or squeak back into it again by flipping your ego or alter ego card. Boop. If Marvel Champions has an innovation, it could be summarized as this. Boop. Now to explain how this works, I first need to explain the villain phase. So once all the players have taken their turn, you enter the villain phase and everyone is dealt a card from the villain deck. This could be a new side scheme, like the villain spending more time with their family. Oh no, it's an illegal arms factory and now their hand is a gun. But just as often, the card you draw from the villain deck is an additional bad dude who is going to do a bunch more bad stuff for every turn you haven't yet staved their head in. But the villain phase is also where you're gonna get thwacked by the villain and any of their friends who are engaged with you, dropping your health bar like a stone. And if your health ever reaches double zero, you are eliminated from the game and all of your friends have to try and finish the scenario without you. However, if you end your turn in mild-mannered mode, and the villains can't find you, you receive no damage at all. In fact, you can heal, but instead, the villain and all of the friends who are engaged with you scheme instead, adding threat to that plot, which is going to lose the game for everybody. So, Marvel Champions is a game where, in addition to trying to deal health damage to the villain, players are spinning plates, or rather spinning their identity, to manage their own health and the public plots. But what makes this system really fun to engage with is that one of the two sides of your card is just better. If you are chilling out on the sofa instead of having vans thrown at you, then you actually draw one additional card at the end of your turn, which is huge. The end result of this system is just a really fun tonal representation of being a superhero. You're made to feel so powerful, dispatching enemies with the flick of a card like you were some kind of real life subpar gambit. The coolest Marvel superhero. Until some game effect or simple mismanagement leaves you in the form you don't ideally want to be in that turn and you go, ah, can you just actually stay in the fight for one more turn, you say to your friend who is essentially stuck in a boxing ring while you are stuck in your apartment. So, there is a quick overview for you of Marvel Champions, a game that is well thought out, entertaining, and with a core box that's pretty generous, you know? Just with this core set, you're gonna be busy for at least three or four evenings before you start eyeing up some of the expansion packs that have already started launching out of Fantasy Flight with the startling speed of a t-shirt cannon. If you're a Marvel fan and think you could handle a game with both a crib sheet and a crib magazine, I reckon you could feel very safe picking up a copy of Marvel Champions. However, if you are like me and the sentence, have you seen the trailer for the new Avengers movie? Has all the effect of ringing the doorbell of an empty house. And if you would really rather have a good card game than anything else, let me tell you, Every night that I spent playing Marvel Champions, I wished I was playing the Arkham Horror card game. And in fact, I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is. After I'm done filming this review, this box is going in another box destined straight for the Shucks Library, and I am in fact going to order some new expansions for this game. And I think I have a bit of a responsibility to you to break down exactly why that is. I'll start by telling you what I just don't like about Marvel Champions, and to do that, I first have to point out something. You might assume from the number of cards showing either punching or ye olde zero gravity boobs that this game is a zesty, action-packed romp. It's actually extremely numerical. Are you gonna, on your turn, take to the skies as Iron Man? 
Well, let's crunch the numbers. In order to activate your rocket boots and gain the aerial trait, you have to discard either Tigra or Mark V armor, and it might be quite valuable to keep those for later. And if you are aerial, you'll improve the damage of supersonic punch by four, and your Mark V helmet will clean up one additional threat. To take your turn in Marvel Champions is to tango with a ton of tiny calculations just like this one. And let me point out, this is not the bad part. It's fun to build up an engine until enemies collapse under the weight of your integers. But taking your turn in Marvel Champions is solitary fun. All of these fun deliberations that you get to wrestle with on your turn are sadly opaque to the rest of the table. They're hidden in your hand of cards and in the tiny sideways text of your tableau, which means Marvel Champions becomes a game of players waiting for their turn to interact and have fun with the thing, and also where I felt an immediate pressure to take my turn and make my decisions as quickly as I could without messing the game up, because there might be one, two, or, Lord forbid, three people waiting for their turn. What this then led to is by my second evening with Marvel Champions, my friends had stopped saying card names, because nobody wants to hear you say, I'm going to use Chase Them Down and the Power of Aggression to play Pepper Potts, then I'm going to use Pepper Potts' ability and Genius to play Tigra, then I'm going to use Tigra to attack this per- It's like, it, no, absolutely not. People want an efficient delivery of information that is relevant to them. Way better to play with someone who goes, I played all this and I've killed that person and I've eliminated this scheme. Great, done, the game keeps its pace up. However, this of course neuters a lot of Marvel Champions' narrative potential. And also, it doesn't entirely fix the problem. If you've played Dominion, you'll remember those turns of industrial grade faff, where you're looking at someone waiting for them to take their turn, and they start their turn by going, I'm gonna play this card to draw three more cards, and then I'm gonna tap this to draw two more cards. And while for them, they're having this beautiful moment where the possibility space of the Talon opens up in their head like a fractal flower. But for everybody else at the table, you're just thinking, I wonder if this turn's gonna take so long that I could go and make a tea. My final criticism, it's not quite right to say that Marvel Champions has an underwhelming ending, because in truth, it often doesn't have an ending at all. A scenario often ends with a player stating the question, can we kill the villain this turn? And then the game ends with algebra, as you all work out what happens if you stop playing upgrades and beating sort of minions, and if you all just focus on doing damage. Well, I could do eight, seven, nine, 10, 11, 12, how much could you do? 13, 12 plus 13, 25, you could do seven, 25 plus seven, 32, how much health does a villain have? 31, we did it. Because the game has no variance, you don't even need to play the cards, except in a sort of ceremonial fashion. But what this meant is that when my friends and I finished the scenario, even if we'd been trying to beat it for like two nights, the atmosphere would actually leave the room when we realized we did it. As if someone turned off a karaoke machine just as the chorus coming up. It was time to pack away our fun engines because we won. Yay. And this is not a huge deal, but it might be in a game where you're supposed to, when you finish scenario, get super amped to spend more money on another. For what it's worth, all of these criticisms are pretty minor quibbles. I said it before, I'll say it again. Marvel Champions is pretty fun. It's pretty good. It's nice. But it pales in comparison to the dark magic of Arkham. The best thing in the Arkham Horror Card game is completely absent from Marvel Champions, and that is, you guessed it, the campaign. And the campaign is great not just for that fun system of leveling up your deck and putting in new super cards between scenarios, but because when you're playing a game where every game affects the subsequent one, where every choice you make, every NPC that dies is written down, the game becomes so much more electric. And you care about your friends' turns. You also care about your friends' turns because the game requires substantially more teamwork. If you play a gun instead of going into a room, that drastically affects my turn. So, I guess the simple way to put it, Marvel Champions is a game where my turn is a lot of fun. The Arkham card game is just a lot of fun, full stop. Another huge reason that Arkham feels truly magical, in a way that Marvel Champions absolutely does not, is that so much of this experience takes place not in the little cards on the table, but among your group of friends in conversation. In the Arkham card game, players are forever debating 
where to go, whether to attack this monster, or even the fabulous question of, is it time to stop this investigation before we all die? I mean, goodness, Marvel Champions also is absolutely not the game to buy if you want to feel like a hero. Arkham is the game where when you put yourself between the forces of evil and your friends, you feel like you're truly risking something. Because you are! And when you triumph over the forces of evil, this is the game that will have you high-fiving your friends. Assuming you triumph. You don't, you don't often triumph in the Arkham card game. I should stress, this game isn't for everybody. When we say it's mean, that's because it's mean. So I think we've lost this scenario. Uh, but on the up bright side, both of our characters are permanently scarred. Cool, that sounds great. Can you check me the campaign log? And I'll write down everything that we've lost. Okay, so it's Thomas Winkleman. Yep. He gone. Uh -huh. uh, Alexander Pump. Mm-hmm. Dead as hell. Yep. Oh yes, it's mean. If my Arkham group had a motto, it would be, never mind. So, in summary, Marvel Champions is simply a less ambitious design than the Arkham Horror card game. This is sugary breakfast cereal as compared to this haunting meat sausage. I should point out, Marvel Champions has got campaign expansions promised down the line, but it is so clearly not the game's focus. It wants to provide a streamlined, accessible bit of fun. But I've got to say, if what you're after is a streamlined, accessible, collectible card game from Fantasy Flight, I'd actually rather just play Keyforge, Fantasy Flight's mind-blowingly innovative card game where every deck you can buy is a unique, randomized product. I mean, of course, technically nothing stops you from buying and keeping up with both of these games. It's just they both demand a lot of time and a lot of money. And also they get better the more you invest in each one of them as your card collection grows. So I just cannot see a universe where I would call on my friends to play this instead of this. Ooh, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Oh, She-Hulk, it's such a shame that the capitalist society that we both inhabit means that we can't be friends and must instead be compared like property. I care not for your friendship. I only care that the people know that Shut Up and Sit Down is dedicated to making the best board game reviews in the world, like these ones over here. Wow!